Eight Reasons Anti-SJWs Won't Come Out of the Closet, and Why They Should. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and when I made my recent video about anti-SJWs, aka people who disagree with regressive leftist fourth-wave intersectional feminists, I noticed that perhaps most of the people who wrote comments said they were closet cases, and that they were afraid to admit their true feelings about these cultural issues. They didn't all say why but here's eight reasons I can imagine that people wouldn't openly oppose social justice warriors. Reason number one is obviously the fear of being socially ostracized. The most common fear that individuals have is that they'll lose all of their friends, and that's a perfectly reasonable fear. Prior to this election, social justice warriors assumed that they were such a severe majority that they could collectively bully absolutely everybody into compliance, including their bosses and professors at university. They figured the USA wouldn't be ethnically white as a simple majority very soon, some even being so stupid as to believe that white people are no longer a majority currently. And considering SJWs hold up signs at protests that say, the future is female, they clearly thought they'd have luck bullying men forever too. They thought they were unstoppable, and many of them still show that hubris. However, deep down, I think they're all starting to realize they're wrong. And as I always talk about, the ones who won't adapt to the new social makeup of the West after Brexit and Trump's election will usually end up eating each other as starving piranha syndrome kicks in. SJWs will be so busy fighting with each other soon enough that you won't even need to worry about them. And the solution for finding happiness would be to not worry about them at all. There will be new groups of friends forming in every social sphere. And if you get in with the new crowd now, you'll have a leg up because you were quick to the party. Reason number two why people won't come out as anti-SJW is because there's a part of them that still believes that you have to be racist and sexist to not be called racist and sexist. These people legitimately believe that giving racial minorities unanimously better treatment than white people might be fair, and that women deserve all sorts of entitlements, because women are fragile maidens. Similarly, many people believe that honoring non-binary identities with gender-neutral pronouns is actually respectful. But like Jordan B. Peterson talks about, it's not exactly respectful to honor somebody's completely outlandish narcissistic demands. Instead of giving somebody something that they deserve, which is a pronoun that legitimately suits the way they are perceived by others, giving a quote-unquote non-binary person a gender-neutral pronoun is really just giving them something that they have no right to ask for, which is changing the very fabric of communication if they got their way. I don't believe we should ever give somebody the impression that they can demand that they can change the entire world around them. When somebody says, jump, the last thing that you should say is, how high? Similarly, when a black person says that you have to agree with everything they say because they are black, and that they have, quote unquote, lived experiences with racism, which means they're always right every time they talk about race, the last thing you should do is to agree to that, because judging the merit of somebody's arguments based on the color of their skin is inherently racist. The solution is just to be honest with your true feelings, because your intuition is important, and lying about your gut instincts will eat you up inside. The third reason people might go along with SJW bullshit, even though they hate it, is that they are afraid of their teachers in school. Again, this is a big important one because a lot of teachers in both university and even high school are complete SJWs, and they'll usually grade you poorly for disagreeing with them. However, I think if your teacher is teaching something that is definite bullshit, you should stand up to your teacher. Chances are, if you do stand up to them, other kids will do it too, especially now. I don't mean that you should bully your teacher like that awful high school kid who yelled at her teacher saying that he doesn't know what racism means because he's white while her friend filmed it. Rather, I just mean that you are always welcome to challenge the ideas proposed by authority. And if you say something, 
others will probably say something. The fourth reason people might stay closeted against SJWs is that they are afraid of their family thinking that they are quote-unquote right-wing bigots. This is a tough one because family members are often really hard to avoid, but also really hard to have a good conversation with. I find that the most effective way to start to wake family members up is to find really good anti-SJW speakers, preferably actual academics like Jordan B. Peterson, Jonathan Haidt, and Christina Hoff Summers. Show them their videos on YouTube as they are really hard to argue with, and they also explain things in a non-abrasive way that most people won't claim to be offended by. The fifth reason people might not give up being an SJW, even if they are snapping out of it, is that they have gotten accustomed to the newfound privileges that come along with being able to claim oppression, including things like getting away with cry-bullying, and they don't want to let go of their oppression points. Take this Facebook post I saw today. I just have to read it out loud because it's funny and this person is relatively popular with the SJW crowd. Feeling so strange. I'm on a plane and was accidentally in the wrong seat. One of my worst travel nightmares for some reason. And the person whose seat I was in happened to be one of my bully nemesises from 4-H camp and high school. She didn't recognize me, but seeing her and inconveniencing her woke a raging bull inside me. You'd think I'd have better things to still get spicy about 18 years later, right? And my only response to her was, No. I'm not going to move for you, but feel free to take my seat. It didn't last because she was shocked and appalled and glaring at me just the way she did when she used to call me lesbian witch freak. I absolutely had to move, of course, but I took my sweet time, I'll have you know, and I made sure to jam a finger in her psych psyche on my way out. 2017, this was probably not an improvement. Oh, God, that was painful to read. You see, she sounds like a complete psycho, and as if she's making up the story entirely, kinda. But either way, she is undoubtedly getting accolades from her friend group for posting this. The solution to snapping out of this type of thing is obviously to get over yourself and accept that if you sound anything like this, for your own sake, it would be best to get over this sooner than later. Reason number six that these people will not give up being SJWs is that they are afraid of random internet hate mobs. This one is definitely a scary thing indeed, and I'd clearly be a hypocrite to say that I'm not the slightest bit scared of it myself as somebody who is relatively anonymous, but I think that people should remember that most SJWs are too busy fighting with each other to actually organize much of anything. More so, if people try to bully you on the internet, tell people about it. If you do YouTube, make a video explaining who the perpetrator was. If enough people are aware of how individuals like Cat Black constantly smear people for disagreeing with her, eventually that will come back to haunt her. This has happened on a small level to just about everybody, and chances are if you talk about it openly, other people will speak up and after a while, the culprits will be the ones who are affected the most. Karma's a bitch. And it's also a bitch to have a long list of people complaining about how you've bullied them. So add your name to that list and take the cat blacks of the world down. The seventh reason people won't stop being SJWs is that they might be afraid of being sucked into becoming right wing once they leave the herd. This is an absolutely valid concern because it's incredibly difficult to hold on to one's political compass when everybody around you has uniform opinions and most people who oppose SJWs are conservative or libertarian, so they believe in many opposing ideas to the left. I am not saying that right-wing type people are necessarily awful, but I will say that it is valid to fear falling from your first ideology and into some other form of ideological tribalism. There's no surefire solution to this, minus that you have to remember that you'll never find a community with zero problems. Even skeptics have their own issues because although it is inherent in their being to be critical of everything, as a product of that, they can almost never agree on stuff, which means it's hard to get things done as a group for skeptics. So just try to remain critical of ideas, but give people a little bit of slack. That's the only advice I can give. 
The eighth reason people won't give up being SJWs is that they don't want to give up on what originally inspired them to work towards quote-unquote social justice. And this is one of the only noble concerns of the bunch. However, I don't think that it's too logical. Because quote-unquote social justice has almost nothing to do with justice anymore. Rather, it is almost entirely about misplacing blame onto our peers of the wrong gender, skin color, religion, and sexual orientation. It's not about helping anybody, but about demonizing groups of people and apostates of the social justice religion. The solution to being worried about giving up the positive aspects of what drew you to social justice culture is to not give up those things. Nobody is making you stop being a good person just because you don't support Black Lives Matter, feminism, and non-binary special snowflakes. All you have to do is legitimately treat people with respect and take every activist cause as it comes, being skeptical of anything that demands your unquestioned allegiance. Only attach yourself to things you feel 110% sure about. And remember that social justice warriors won't be happy with you if you aren't attacking men, white people, and anybody else who they feel is standing in their way. That's all for tonight. Drop me a comment and stay tuned.